now that's going to work. Uh, for all of our online students, you missed the prayer. I'm sorry about that. Uh, but I just realized we hadn't turned the microphone on. But you're with us now. Okay. So if you haven't been able to get a hold of the textbook as yet, uh, what I want to encourage you to do is to, uh, to do it as quickly as possible. Uh, you can either get it as an e-book, and uh, a number of students have elected to do that. Or alternatively, you can go to places like uh, Fish Pond, uh, the Book Depository, uh, booko.com, and uh, in any one of the, those kinds of platforms, you can probably order it online uh, with around about a, a five to, to 10 day turnaround. So uh, the textbook will be incredibly important to you. Um, we're using the fourth edition. If you've got an older edition, I suggest that you upgrade to a fourth edition. Uh, it has been upgraded a number of times. I'm, I'm still actually sweating on them bringing out the next edition. This one's been around for a few years. But each time they upgrade it, they bring in some extra really good articles. And what we, you will find that every week, there are articles that I'm directing you to read. And that will become really important for you to actually do the reading. It's not just a matter of what's in the notes and what you hear in class. The readings uh, you will find really, really helpful. Now, we're not going to read right through the whole of the book. The book is basically a collection of articles and readings. And uh, so I've tried to work my way through and choose articles out of the, the book, which I think will be most appropriate to the, the basic flow of where we're going with the course of study. So uh, that's the first thing. Uh, next thing to say, most of you, uh, just a reminder, sorry, that there is pre-reading to be done every week. So don't... Uh, don't just kind of put it on the never-never. Uh, you will understand, I hope, that in your course of study, that it is generally accepted that if you're doing uh, four units of study, that represents 40 hours a week of commitment. Uh, each unit represents 10 hours a week of commitment. And so that involves your reading, your reading from your textbook, your reading from uh, the material that is uh, supplied in your learning guides, it also involves uh, the reading of any of the other additional resources that I put online. Uh, not only will there be other resources such as that, but there will be video clips very often that I'll encourage you to have watched. Uh, for those of you who are online students, there will be a weekly forum that you'll need to complete as well. And so there's quite a bit of work to be done together then, of course, with your assignment research. And we'll talk more a little bit about that at the moment because that's where all of you are hanging out at the moment you want to know what the assignments are. Essentially, there are three assignments. And uh, the first assignment is a seminar paper. And uh, we have already had quite a number of you have picked up on the note that I put on Moodle and have begun to elect your seminar topic. Uh, I'm going to send this around to the class. This is a list here of the, uh, the seminar topics and where people's names are in there. Roughly uh, going by numbers, we need at least two. And some weeks, we might need three people who have a seminar topic to present for us, all right? So some of you will be presenting on the same topic. That's proved to be interesting over the years because uh, people tend to come at things from a, a very different angle. And so there's a richness that comes through those sorts of presentations. So I'm going to send that around. Um, just on that, you will find uh, that you should have already accessed by this stage uh, your unit guide. And so that's a copy of the 300 level unit guide. There's a 500 level unit guide. And in that unit guide, uh, there's lots of important information that I want to encourage you to read. Uh, a lot of people, a little bit uh, like, you know, you get a new piece of tech and you, you think, yes, there's the instruction manual. That's great. Let me figure out how this thing works. And when it doesn't work, then you go back and check the manual, all right? Um, don't be like that. That's probably a guy thing to do. Uh, my wife reminds me of that periodically, all right? So um, read the manual first, all right? Read through the unit guide. And if you haven't already done it, uh, set yourself a task as part of your 10-hour commitment for this week to read through the unit guide carefully. Uh, there's a whole bunch of things in there. Uh, there's a schedule of the lectures for uh, the, the whole of the 13 weeks. Uh, there is also the list of seminar topics. And then for you, most importantly, uh, there is a clear outline of what is required in each of the, the assessment items. So on page 11, there is detail about uh, the seminar paper. And so I'm just going to read this out very quickly. This is what it says for the 300 level. Each student will be allocated a seminar topic in which they are to prepare a thousand word seminar paper. This paper will be shared with the in-class students and posted on the Moodle site 
for the benefit of distance students or our online students. And what we do is after you have presented your seminar paper, uh, I will take your name off it and I will then post it back up on our Moodle site so that all of our online students have the opportunity to read through your seminar paper. There's a note there. While creativity is encouraged in the presentation of your seminar, the content of the seminar paper and not the presentation will be assessed. In other words, what I'm going to be assessing is not just how well you, you present it, and I get some people who are great presenters, um, and you can, you can be as creative as you like. Uh, you can do a, simply a talk. I get some people who simply read their seminar paper. I get other people who have uh, the most phenomenal PowerPoints with animations and all kinds of things. I've had some people who want to do video presentations for their, for their seminar presentation. That's cool. Knock yourself out, all right? That is great. But at the end of the day, what I want to receive from you is the paper. Set out as you would set out a normal assignment, and I will be assessing the content of that. All right? You understand what I'm saying? But there is value, I think, in us being able to, in one sense, become one another's teachers. And so uh, what we suggest is for our online students, that, uh, for, for our benefit, we want you to submit your paper two days before it will be presented in class because I'm assuming for our online students uh, that most of you will not be able to come in to present. So if you send your paper, I can present on your behalf. All right? So online students, two days before the date in which it is to be presented in class, that gives me a chance to have a look at it and get my head around what you are trying to, to present for us and I'll present on your behalf. Also with our online students, I want to suggest that at the end of your seminar paper that you provide us with a list of three discussion questions. The whole idea of a seminar, of course, is that we, we are interacting with the material. And so uh, you will have discussion questions for, for our in-class students. I'll be looking to you also to bring to us some discussion questions out of your seminar. Uh, something that to, to fuel some discussion and debate amongst us. The key Assessment criteria are, are outlined for you there. Provide a clear outline of the seminar topic. Demonstrate a clear understanding of the key issues, people, places, and events related to the topic. And then number three, demonstrate a good degree of theological and missiological reflection on the key issues identified. In other words, you're not just uh, looking at a topic, but you're helping us to begin to reflect biblically and theologically upon the significance of the topic that you've chosen. In a moment, we'll put those topics up on the screen and we'll talk more about that as well. Provide a thoughtful application to the issues confronting our missional endeavors in the 21st century. In other words, we want to uh, look at the topic. We want to make sure that we've given some clear uh, biblical reflection as to the significance of the topic. And then how does that intersect with the way in which we are thinking about our process of mission here in the 21st century. All right, so I'm going to send that piece of paper around for you now. If you have not already uh, listed yourself down against one of the topics, can I encourage you to try and do that today? Uh, if not, by the 23rd, if your name doesn't appear there, uh, I will simply allocate you in a topic and, uh, and that will be the one that you've got, all right? So uh, the only way we can do it is really has been uh, first in best rest. I'll give it to you, Hilke, you've already contacted me, uh, and so your name is already on there. Okay, uh, the second assignment is an interview report, and there is clear information set out for you in your unit guide about what that interview report is all about. You will also see on the Moodle site that I have a, a, a tutorial about how you might go about pulling together that interview report and uh, I've got PowerPoint slides there, and I think I've also got some Word docs suggesting ways that you might approach that. And so uh, what I've tried to do is to provide for you as much background, uh, apart from doing the assignment for you, which I know you'd love me to do, uh, but to give you enough background so that you can actually grab a hold of this and say, yeah, actually, I can run with this thing, all right? Um, and then, of course, the last one is a research assignment. And again, there are clear outlines in your unit guide as to the question. In fact, you can choose, I think there's probably about three different questions I've suggested there that you can choose one, and then I've given you the assessment criteria for how to approach those. A little reminder in the midst of all of that, 
that if you are first time round at doing um, tertiary level study and writing these kinds of assignments and you're thinking, man, this is freaking me out, I've got no idea, we do have access to our tutor. For our online students, there is also the possibility for you to contact our tutor. All you need to do is contact our college office and, uh, and make an appointment so that you can have some contact uh, with our tutor as well. For those of you who are on campus, you can just go to the front desk and arrange a meeting with our tutor as well, if you feel that you would appreciate that. Having said all of that, there is some fabulous information on Moodle about assignment writing. Uh, it's on one of the, the early pages of your Moodle site under student resources, and I would encourage you, some rainy Saturday afternoon when you are bored stiff, you've got nothing better to do. No, do it sooner than that. Um, go through and look carefully at all of the, the material that is provided for you there about assignment writing. There is a gold mine of information. There are sample assignments showing you what is good and what's not so good. There are videos uh, which talk directly to you about how to write an assignment. Um, so please, don't just sort of wait till the night before and think, oh man, I've got to get that assignment feed out. I have no idea how to write an assignment, all right? Uh, don't do that. Get onto it early in the piece. Uh, make it, get yourself familiar with how to write an assignment. And then uh, if you begin to, to feel that you're struggling, get in touch with the tutor. So I hope that's all helpful to, uh, to our online students as well. Just a, a reminder for our online students, uh, there is a forum post that you are required to complete each week. Uh, this is a compulsory part of your studying online. Uh, it is in place of your being in class, and so you need to do that. Uh, it's part of our ACT requirement of you, and so uh, I need to be able to provide ACT with the assurance that you've completed all of the forum posts for the semester. So please make sure that you do that. Any questions from anyone in the class here at the moment? No? Right, this is all good. By this stage, you should have already accessed the Moodle and you would see that uh, under the, the subject we're looking at, there will be 13 modules, one for each of the 13 weeks of input. Uh, this week, the module title is Our God is a Missionary God, we're looking at the Abrahamic Covenant, Israel and the Nations. You'll find that under each of the, um, the modules, I have an introduction, a video introduction. Uh, that is for the benefit of both our online students, but also for those who are in class. Uh, just to give you a sense of where we're traveling in the midst of all of this, yeah. You, we can have three people, yes, but certainly not more than three people in any one, yeah, okay. Uh, you'll find that every week there, I also have uh, the module learning guide. And I would encourage you, if, uh, if well, I'd encourage you to simply download it uh, and keep it. Uh, so what I find is a lot of students will actually come to class with their laptop, they'll have the learning guide there in front of them, and as we're sharing in the class, they will begin to overtype. In other words, they're typing extra information into that learning guide. If that's your preferred model of operation, I suggest that you type any of your additional comments in red so that when you go back and look at it later on, you can see what is the extra stuff that you've actually inserted into it. Okay? Um, so there is the module learning guide. Uh, there's often throughout the module learning guide uh, places where I'm asking you to stop and to read, to reflect, and so on. And for our online students, I want to encourage you to make sure that you do it. Um, don't try and just take the, uh, the shortcut on this journey. Read the materials that I've suggested. Pause and take the time to think through uh, some of the issues that are being raised along the way. Then there's also a copy of the PowerPoint, which I will use as I teach in class. And for our online students, again, that's a really helpful summary of the major thrust of where we're going in the lecture. So for online students, uh, you ought to have, I would suggest, a, a printed out copy of the learning guide for that model uh, module, rather, and then have the PowerPoint and you can be going through those two things side by side and hopefully you'll be gaining some additional uh, insights there. There's also usually a, some kind of additional resources. Sometimes it's a website, such as this one here. It might be a PDF document. 
Uh, whatever documents are provided there online, I would strongly advise you to download them and save them. Uh, create for yourself a file so that you've got this information. The additional resources are not there just to fill in the space, all right? They're there uh, for you to do some further reading and reflection. And to be honest, at this level of study, what you are really wanting to do is to try and start thinking deeply through some of the issues. And so uh, that's the way that each of those will be set up. Sometimes there'll be additional videos there that I have up um, for you to, to have a look at as well. So before the class each week, for those who are coming to class, uh, watch the intro, read the module learning guide. If you've read it before you get here, um, you're gonna have your head in the space. If you just wait till you get here, uh, you're gonna be flying by the seat of your pants, all right? So try to read it before you get here. Um, remember, that's part of your 10 hours a week, hey, right? Uh, read the prescribed articles from your text. So every week in the learning guide, I will direct you uh, often to two or three, maybe sometimes four articles from the text. Read them before you come. Uh, don't see that as just the optional extra, uh, the icing on the top of the cake. Read them before you come because you will be in a much better position than to engage with the material that we're, we're discussing in class. Then download the additional resources. Um, each one of your learning guides will have a little section at the front that says before you start. And it will be a reminder of the journal articles from the book that you've already been asked to read. Now at the end of module one, it has before next week, you read these, all right? The start of module two, these appear again as a little reminder in case you forgot it from last time, you're supposed to read these before, before you start, all right? So um, strong encouragement to make sure that you're doing that as well. The truth is you will get, in one sense, as much out of this course as you're prepared to invest in the course. But I am sincerely hoping that you're gonna find that in this course, something happens. Frankly, for my part, I think that this course actually draws together so many of the threads of all of the other things that we're studying here at Collins. Over the years, I've had so many students who come to me at the end of this course and said, this should be mandatory for everyone. This makes everything else make sense. And I hope it does that for you. I really sincerely do. Um, do I? No, it's not mandatory at the moment. Um, <coughs> now that I'm principal, ah, oh, you know, I, I'm just waiting to start throwing my weight around. Okay, we'll, we'll see how we go. All right, after class, online students, make sure you complete uh, your forum activity. Please don't just let them drag on and on and think, oh, I'll get to those in a few weeks' time and then try and knock out about four or five. Uh, do them weekly, online students, please. Do them weekly. You will get better benefit out of doing that and, uh, and then uh, hopefully I'll be able to respond to you quite regularly on those as well. And then, of course, read through any additional resources. Uh, that come. So in, as far as the um, submission of your assignments, you'll find that uh, there is a place on your Moodle and it looks like this. I've basically got 301 assignment one and then I've just indented across for the 501. Uh, please submit it in the right place. And the reason I've indented it is to try and make sure that the 500s uh, submit it in the right place and don't get it confused, all right? So 500s, you're indented, okay? Sorry about that, but that's just the way life is, you're indented, okay? Um, so make sure that you submit it at the right place. Occasionally I've had people who've submitted um, a 500 assignment in the 300 assignment and I'm going through the 500s and think, where is that assignment? I send them a little email and they come back, they say, no, I submitted it a week ago. Really? And I'll go, oh yes, you submitted it as a 300 student. Well done, okay. All right, 10% knocked off. No, that's not true. That's not true. All right. So, um, but uh, so that, that's where you'll submit your assignments. I, I strongly encourage you to submit your assignments uh, as a Word doc. If you go to our student resources on the Moodle site, you'll see an assignment pro forma that gives you the title page. And all you've got to do is kind of fill in the blanks. Uh, that's really neat. It already gives you a basic um, structural outline of how to write an assignment so you can just kind of fill in the blanks and then start to write your assignment. So I really want to encourage you to submit it as a Word doc. 
And the reason for that is that when I'm marking it, if it's in a Word doc, I just use uh, Word tracking and I'll put all my comments on it and then I'll send it back to you. But all my comments plus then a cover sheet where I'll give you the final assessment and mark. Um, you can submit it as a PDF. Uh, that's a little bit more, more difficult um, to actually manipulate in terms of tracking comments, I find at least. So a Word doc if you possibly can. If you're one of those Apple people, well, yeah. Um, I, yeah, okay, all right. Bless you if you're an Apple person. All right, uh, now look, the other thing to say is if for some reason, if for some legitimate reason, I should have added, uh, it appears that you're going to be late in getting your assignment in, then there is a procedure to be followed for that. And the procedure is this, you go to the Malian website, uh, if you go to this section here called New and Current Students, which is all of you, uh, and scroll down to Forms, and then from Forms go down to Request an Extension for the submission of a, your assignment, click on that, and then you can type in what the assignment is and why you are looking to submit late, and uh, a request for the kind of extension, how long you're looking for. That will automatically go to our academic dean. He's a lovely guy, but he's mean. No, I shouldn't say that. No, he's a lovely guy. But at the same time, he's not just gonna be a pushover, right? If you're late, um, you, you, you ought to have a jolly good reason. And if you've got a, a good uh, reason for that lateness, he, will, he may give you an extension of an extra week, or he might say, no, I'm only giving you three days. Um, if he doesn't think that your, uh, your reason is particularly um, strong, he might say, look, I'll, I'll give you an extension for a week, but you are gonna lose 2%, all right? So you do need to be aware of that. Um, so try to make sure that your assignment does come in on time. A uh, little red circle there just to remind you of where that is. If, if you're not sure of it, it's on the PowerPoint, all right? So you'll be able to go back and have a look at it again. Okay. Um, just talking about the first assessment task, because this one's coming up really quickly. Um, next week, we've got Jesus, the fulfillment of God's mission plan, and Jules has very kindly offered to be number one off the rank for us. Has anyone else put their name down for that? It's a great way to get an assignment out of the way. Matt? No, that's, that, that's, that's next week. Oh, the date, is it? Oh, ha. I beg your pardon, I tricked you, didn't I? Okay, sorry. Um, yeah, ignore that, ignore that, okay, sorry. Um, yes, it is for next week, all right? So, yes, yes. That's a, exactly right, yeah. So on Anzac Day, we will not be having lectures. Um, so in, in that sense, for Anzac Day, uh, all of those who are submitting on that particular subject, uh, you will submit it and it will be posted up online, your, your presentation. Uh, we probably won't have the opportunity to actually be presenting it in class. And that's just unfortunately, uh, I, I felt really ripped off when it worked out that way, uh, because actually this is, this is the area of my doctoral research, and, uh, and so I was really excited about uh, doing that lecture that day, but uh, it'll have to be an all online deal, so I'm sorry about that. Yep. Yep. Uh, yes, you, you, you can certainly do that, but um, you do want to make sure as well that you have referred to others who are, are recognised uh, specialists or uh, authorities in the field as well. Uh, but you can certainly reflect uh, to some extent upon your, your own engagement in that exercise. All right. So yes, sorry about that. Um, that was a, a faux pas, wasn't it? I was getting too excited, so I had the wrong date there. Uh, so let's um, see if we can get it all filled in that. So how does that actually affect us then? Does that mean all the dates are wrong? Just the first one. Yes, okay. Yep, sorry, it should have been 21st. Hey? Yep, okay. All right, so uh, please, uh, our online students, if you have not already contacted me, and quite a number of you have, and you've put in, in your request, what I'll do as a result of the end of today, I will repost this up online with everyone's names in, in the locations and our online students, you'll have to kind of slot in around the other names that are already there. 
If I don't have a request or a submission from you by the 23rd, uh, I will contact you and I will tell you what will be your topic, okay? All cool? Wonderful. All right, uh, having said all of that, um, I, let's just pause that for a moment. I, I did omit to give some introduction to myself. So for our online students, some of you do know me. Uh, my name's Peter Francis. That was probably a bit of a given. You've already read some of the stuff there. Uh, I'm the principal of the college and uh, fairly newly appointed. I've served here at the college for around about seven years after about 22 years of pastoral ministry, about 10 years as a high school teacher before that. Um, served as vice principal of the college here for a number of years and late November last year moved into the role of, of principal of the college. The areas in which I have typically taught are uh, in the area of missions, which is probably the area of my most significant passion, if I could put it that way. Um, and I've typically also taught Old Testament, which I love to teach alongside of mission, because I think to, to fully understand the missional heart of God, we actually need to actually go right back to the very beginning. And we see it unfolded for us throughout the pages of the Old Testament text. Uh, and we're, we're going to look at some of that today. And, uh, and I hope that you'll get a sense of where I'm heading in all of this. Um, the mission of God did not just start uh, with the coming of Jesus in the Gospels. The mission of God, in fact, finds its roots, its genesis, right back in Genesis. And we will be looking at that. And we're going to trace together something of how this great missional plan and heart of God has been unfolded, uh, not only through the scriptures, through the Old Testament, we'll move then into the New Testament. We're then going to move beyond the New Testament. We're going to begin to look at the early church and how they had been captivated by the mission of God. We're going to look at the history of mission as it has unfolded down through the centuries. We're going to look then at more contemporary uh, mission and some of the challenges facing us in undertaking the mission of God in the world today. And, uh, and then we're going to be uh, looking at some of the incredible initiatives that are being uh, initiated even right now in seeing the mission of God being pressed out into this world. And uh, so in one sense, that's a very broad thumbnail sketch of the whole of our journey. Um, so just, uh, I'll take that in just a moment, but um, to finish off, um, for those who are, are watching online, um, we're thrilled to have you with us and trust that God's gonna bless you richly throughout this journey. And a reminder to you that uh, if you have questions along the way, uh, please uh, send an email through to me and we'll be more than happy to try and address those questions for you along the way. All right, so we're gonna just, uh, uh, we'll take that one question, I think, now, just in case it is helpful to these guys. Yeah. Yes, well, we're going to start looking at some of that in just a moment, so thanks for that. All right. Okay, uh, so we're going to switch off uh, the video now, and um, we'll continue on with the class, and a reminder to our online students, if you have questions, you can always contact us. Yes. Okay, uh, yes, for, for those who are in class, uh, you, you can submit your seminar paper on the day, but for those who are online, you need to submit it two days prior to when it is due to be presented in class. And again, for our online students, uh, if you want to, to uh, send through a PowerPoint uh, to accompany the, uh, the Word doc that you, you presented with your seminar presentation, by all means do that. Uh, just mark on your Word doc where you want the PowerPoint to be advanced, and sometimes people have done that. As I said, some people have decided uh, to, to do a video presentation of themselves giving the seminar. Fantastic, if you do that, you can save it as a YouTube clip and simply send us uh, the link, but you'll also need to send a Word doc with the uh, assignment style set out of your seminar presentation. All right, okay, we'll switch this off now.